and so I want to spend just a quick minute talking about a little bit about this idea that we're doing because part of what sometimes people will wonder is, well, how exactly should I be thinking about this process? Am I, I'm not very good at this yet, or what do I do with it? The reality here is I want you to remember this first month, particularly in the writing phase, is about developing tools. These tools are going to help us as we write, and so we're not going to use every single technique all the time, but as we use them together, you're going to be able to have the tools to, to pull out of your tool belt when the right situation arises. So these are sort of, again, the four big techniques that we're going to talk about a lot, and what I've learned in, in interviewing lots and lots of authors is that these are the the sorts of techniques and tools that you're going to use quite a bit. Now again, it won't be, you know, you sit down and say I'm writing plot writing or today I'm doing nugget writing. You may do some of that early on, but eventually what will happen is these will become part of your sort of natural doing and what you'll find is they're helpful in that way. So we've talked about these as the four techniques and we're going to be working on the third one today. But what to better understand what these are as tools is I want you to first understand what they will help you do as you continue to write. Plot writing is a technique that may be challenging for some people. Again, we don't write that way, we don't speak that way often. And so using some of these techniques from the seven plots is really going to help you with better story writing. So you may sit down and do something that is a specific story you want to tell, or you may go back through a first draft and say, wow, this one didn't seem to land. What could I do to it? How could I incorporate one of these sort of seven plots to help it stand out better? Or how can I use more of the 3Ds to help? So again, the goal of this first technique is to give you that. The second technique that we've talked about is this idea of nugget writing. And in some ways, what nugget writing helps you do is really take something that could feel really narrow and start to show how you can make connections outside of it. Nugget writing takes the idea that you may have any sort of technique or tool or idea or inspiration or blog post that you have going on out there and you can say, okay, how can I connect this into the, the broader learning? And so, as you heard me share, I told the story of how a Facebook video, two minutes and 12 seconds, about bagels in Montreal, Canada, were able to lead me into an entire theme that became a chapter on openness. That idea here wouldn't have happened if I wasn't open to listening and looking for these nuggets. Number one, these things in the world you see that help inspire you or get you thinking about your book in these sort of subconscious brain oftentimes, and then finding how we connect it to more pieces. That's really the power of what nugget writing will do, helping you take and connect disconnected ideas into the broader theme of your book. The fourth technique that we're going to talk about next week is actually called hook writing. And, and really one of the things that you'll find about hooks is that when you're writing a book or when you're writing something of substance like an article series, you need to grab the reader's attention. There's lots of things that can distract them and get them off. And so in particular, we want to learn how do we do that. And there's a number of techniques and tactics that we'll be talking about that will help you in those ways. So really the goal here is to help you understand how do you begin stories, begin chapters through this idea called hook writing. And then what we're going to be talking about today is this idea that we describe as scribe writing. Now scribe writing is a way to really understand that many of us in our writing style can write in a very formal way. It can feel very formal in that way. We sort of write how we write term papers because our English professors have oftentimes told us that way. Most oftentimes you'll see books, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, have more conversational elements to them. Particularly the style today is trending in that direction. So one of the things we'll talk about today is how to use this to make the writing feel more approachable and conversational as you connect with your reader. These are the four techniques we're going to use. And again, remember, the most important thing is when you combine these elements with some of the other tools, you're going to be able to be very successful at writing and turning, again, that first draft into a much better second draft and even beyond that. So combined with the tools we have, the sort of story inventorying, our editors, and our content index, you're going to find these are going to be really powerful. So today we're going to talk a little bit more so about our sort of third technique that we call scribe writing as a way to sort of build more conversational techniques and as potentially a way to help you write much, much faster. So that's where really the goal of today's session is to dive into this concept called scribe writing.